All right, welcome to Networking Your Way to Your Next Role. My name is Rhea Dixon. You're here at Flyover Camp, or you're listening in. And this is going to be a pretty good, interesting talking about how to cultivate and leverage your network. So a little bit about me. My name is, again, Rhea. I am at the fake Riri on Twitter and Instagram. The real Riri was taken. So the fake Riri I am. I am a back-end engineer by day. I do C-sharp, .NET, uh, Python type applications, web crawlers. That's my, my daytime trade. But by evening, I do everything else. I'm the director for diversity and inclusion for Kansas City Women in Technology. I'm also a mom of a wonderful, terrible toddler. He'll be three shortly. And sometimes I like to go out and not be a wallflower. I'm a recovering shy girl. You'd never guess if you've just met me, I promise. I'm recovering. So here's a few reasons why you should listen to me or why I think you should listen to me. First, I have over a thousand connections on LinkedIn and I think I know personally about 80% of those people. Like I can actually give you a story about how we met the rest of them, you know, just connected. I have about 1,400 friends on Facebook and I know 95% of these people personally. We went to high school or college or we're family. And my network, that vast network, has collect connected me to my last three roles. Two of them are current. One of them was my previous job. And so I'll tell you a little bit more about them and how that network helped me get those jobs. So first of all, what is networking? I'm gonna be cheesy here. We're gonna start this off with a few definitions. I went and got this one from Merriam-Webster. The formal definition of networking is the exchange of information or services among individuals, groups, or institutions. That's kind of what we're talking about a little bit, but I kind of want something a little bit more fleshy. This is a better definition of networking. It's the cultivation of productive relationships for employment and business. This is exactly what we're talking about. I like that they use the word cultivation, and I like that they use the word relationships in this definition. And that's easy enough to get, right? We can kind of pick that apart. We can mash it up. <sighs> but what does all of that mean? What does it mean to cultivate your network? What, is it, what do you all think that it means, like as far as cultivation, as far as building those relationships? I would like to think that it means to have deeper connections than just the surface. Deeper connections than just the surface. Yes, I like that. I like that. Anyone else? No, we're shy. That's cool. I'm good. So I think that getting to the bottom of it, that networking is effectively communicating with others because it has to be effective communication and the efforts to foster a mutually beneficial relationship because it can't be one-sided. One-sided relationships literally do not last that long. You've probably been in a few, and they've dissipated, right? Am I right? And we want to do all of that and share our knowledge and our resources. So it's not just trading my services, but it may be trading something that I know off to you, and maybe in exchange for something that you know or can help me with. So why should I care about networking? What are the benefits? Well, what you know is important. That's how you get on people's radar, right? You're an expert, so of course, bam, what you know. Who you know might be more important, especially in the tech industry. I found several times that the people that work at the places I want to work at, they didn't just randomly blind apply. They knew somebody. They knew somebody that was able to give them some vouch, that was able to give them some leverage. Who you know, I believe, is more important, just as important as what you know. So the what. This is what people can get off of your resume. They can see the things that you know, the skills that you have, the abilities. What they can't tell you, what that resume can't tell somebody is about your personality. It does not tell them what your passions are. And it doesn't tell them about what your potential is. This is what a person who knows you can do. So. You ever tried job hunting without knowing somebody, without networking? Did it feel like this? Yeah, a little bit. Black hole. 
<laughs> waiting and waiting and so much waiting. But with networking, this could be you. This could be us. As we sit there and that connection has helped us out, we're now having a dance party because we got the job. A good network has good benefits. Some of the benefits of a good network, recommendations. They can write you recs on LinkedIn. They can be your referrals on your job applications. That's those people. They can also introduce you to new opportunities, whether those opportunities are actual new jobs, if they're new clients, if they're new um, community service opportunities, this is how you'll find out, it's from your network. You can also pull your mentor from this network or you can become a mentor because you have networked and you found somebody that, hey, you know, this person kind of reminds me of me, I wanna help this person out. And you have expanded reach. So say that you're wanting to get into public speaking in order to expand your reach, you kind of have to start cultivating that network, get to know more speakers, get to know more organizers. They'll introduce you to new CFPs for, um, for conferences you didn't even know existed. Expanded reach is a benefit. Who makes up the network? So we talked about why it's important. So who makes up the network? I think that there are a few degrees of networking. You have your zero degree, your first, your second, and your peripheral network. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it, but this image on the screen, this is indicative of the fact that people are going to move in and out of your, uh, of your ground zero network. So, or, or your level three, they may move a little bit closer, they may move a little bit further, but we're gonna talk about it, and I'm sure that you all know people that have done this in your own networks. So the first one, your ground zero network. This is what I call your nuclear network and these people are closest to you. They can give you a very, very high vouch because they know you, the, they know kind of what you know as well, but these are people that you know, know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but who do you think these people are? Who would you consider to be your ground zero network? Friends. Friends, family members, close co-workers. By close co-workers, I mean these are the co-workers that you will go outside of work and, you know, have a beer, shoot the, um, have good talk with <laughs> outside of work. People that you would like to, you know, interact with outside of your working space. There's, let me go back. So for my ground zero nuclear network, that would be like my mom, my sister, my sister. She is an architect and she knows kind of what I do. She doesn't necessarily know a lot about it, but she knows that I went to school for it. She knows that I do something with tech. Now she might think that I can build computers. That's not my skill set, but I do design websites freelance. I do design apps freelance. And so she will kind of direct her friends my way as far as possible opportunities. What she does know, say for instance, if I wanted to start working at her job in a dev role, she'd be able to give me a really high recommendation because she knows me and she knows my personality. She kind of knows a little bit about how I work. And that network is great to have. They're, they're your built-in network. But sometimes we don't always get buy-in from our nuclear network on our ventures and things that we're trying to do. So there's more to networking than just your ground zero. Here's your first degree, your work circle. These are the people that you have worked with in some capacity. Let's think like um, the Avengers, for example. The Avengers, Captain America and Iron Man have worked together. They have worked together on several different outings and adventures and projects. Iron Man can vouch for Captain America's personality. He can also vouch for the things that he knows. Captain America can tell you, yeah, that's the biggest brain I know. And if that's not the biggest brain, I have another big brain friend, right? This is your work circle. These are the people that are your teammates. They are, say, when I say teammates, you know, if you do intramural sports or whatever. Teammates, your coworkers your organization friends. So I'm in Casey Witt, and 
How I got involved in it is um, I went to Coding and Cocktails, which was for women, and I fell in love with the organization and decided to become a mentor. I was so enthusiastic about it that the founder, Jennifer Wadella, reached out to me about possibly becoming the diversity and inclusion director if I had time. At that point, I was just starting a new job. I was like, yeah, not just yet. I'm trying to learn these three new languages that I didn't learn in school. And I just kept volunteering with the organization. She kept being able to see how I work and see how much I was willing to commit to the organization. Come last November, December, the diversity and inclusion director role still had not been filled, but I was feeling more like, hmm, I can probably step into this role. The fact that I knew Jennifer enabled me to go and ask her what the role was going to entail specifically and what she was expecting from somebody to fill this role, whether or not it already had standards and things. And I was able to talk to her because she was now in my work circle. It was a, it's been a great opportunity. I've taken that and ran with it, and ta-da, diversity and inclusion director. That's me. <laughs> so your second degree, this is your I know a guy. I put an asterisk here because perhaps it, the guy is actually a girl, so I know a girl. But the line that I stole was from Falcon at the end of the movie when he's like, hmm, I know a guy. That guy that he knew was Ant-Man, right? And these are, this second degree, these are people that you've met but you haven't worked directly with. They have a moderate level vouch for your personality and a moderate to high knowledge about what you know how to do or what your skill set is. This is true of Falcon and Ant-Man. Falcon and Ant-Man didn't work together prior to this, I know a guy, but they did fight. They fought each other, so he's like, you know what? He's capable of shrinking very small, getting into really tight spaces. He knows some interesting tech. We might be able to use this guy. That's who you want to be to somebody. You want to be that person that they know. Or you want to know, be the person that knows some person. So this is how um, the symbiotic relationship works. You talk to a person, you figure out kind of what they know, what they can do, and you may or may not be able to help them out right at that point, or they can't help you right at that point, but you filed that person away. So that when an opportunity presents itself, you have a card to pull. I know a guy or a girl. These people, these are your conference attendees. That's where you're going to find them. Hey, now I know some people. Networking events like the meetups and the pawn and pint player, the role player game groups, all of these things. These are networking events. Or you might be connected by a mutual friend. So perhaps I didn't know you, but we both know Sam. And so since we both know Sam, we kind of met at Sam Shindig and kind of started talking together. Your third degree is what I call your peripheral network. Your peripheral network has low vouch because they don't really know you, right? They haven't met you, but they might have a moderate knowledge of what you know. And these are people that you just have not met yet, but you may interact with. This would be, let's, let's keep going with the Marvel theme. Um, so let's say Iron Man and, I don't know, who did he know that that helped him out in a movie. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Bam, that's a good one. That's a good one. They had heard of each other. Doctor Strange knew about Tony Stark. Didn't necessarily know if he liked the guy yet, but he knew him and knew about the stuff that he could do and what, you know, about his skill set because Tony Stark is all over the news. So these people in your peripheral network, you might have seen them on social media. You might be following them on Twitter or on LinkedIn. They're your favorite blogger. They're your, one of your favorite authors. They're friends of your second degree friends. So that friend of a friend that you know, this is one of their friends that knows you just by what that friend was telling them. They're members of other organizations that your org might interact with, so Casey Witt, does some stuff with um, Google Developer Group and women tech makers. And so those people, they have a good idea to, to see what we have in KC Witt and like, oh yeah, there's this person that would be great for this. That's what that kind of networking does for you. The goal is to target the sweet spot. 
What do you think is the sweet spot of those different degrees? From the nuclear, first degree, second degree, and third degree. What one or two or three, what do you think is the sweet spot? Two, we've got two and one. Two and one, y'all are both correct. You're the number one level, these people know you and they know your skills. They know you and they know your skills. Second, they also believe that you'd be an awesome fit. That's why the first and the second degree is the, sweet, is the sweet spot. These are the people that you want to be able to meet. This is how you can enlarge that group because you don't necessarily get the ability to enlarge your family network of people that can actually get you jobs. You, I don't think that we just are out here birthing humans yet, not just yet. So question is how do we initiate and cultivate these connections, these second degree, these first degree connections? Has this ever been you in a room, at a conference, at a party, at a shindig, company event? It's been me before, feeling very alone in a group of people. I like to stick to the walls, the dark spaces, the corners, the drink table, you know, the, the safe spaces. However, you kind of have to attack this with a plan. I say that when you have a plan um, to meet a certain number of people, then you can give that to yourself as a goal. So sometimes I would start off small. Say I have a goal of going somewhere. Say for instance, if I know that the event has about 50 people, I just wanna meet five people. Let me just meet five new people and that's all the people that I have to talk to. If it's a larger event, I try to stay around that 10% range. So I would say, you know, set a small goal, like a goal to meet 10 new people. And when you do that, you know, you simply check them off. You say hi strike up a conversation. If the conversation doesn't go, you know, doesn't go anywhere, it's okay to maneuver on. Or if you find that maybe this person is rubbing you the wrong way, it's okay to say, hey, it was great to meet you. I'm gonna, you know, duck this way for a minute. Another important tactic to use to, as far as cultivating your network is don't let titles dissuade you. And don't let them cloud who you talk to. Don't focus on just the CEO because they are the CEO and don't be intimidated to talk to the CEO because they are the CEO. Also don't neglect the, the small person on the totem pole, somebody who isn't necessarily where you want to be but you don't know who or what they know. So it's a matter of going into it with just the innocent goal of meeting people instead of going into it thinking, oh, what can I get from this person? For those of us that are recovering shy people, or we just have like issues kind of interacting with people, sometimes we have to fight that fear of rejection and fight that fear of being, being awkward and just make the first move. Sometimes it's as simple as saying hi, but say hi like you. So maybe, you know, your hi is yo, or hey yo. And let that be your, your icebreaker. It's definitely the hardest part is just getting to where you can say hi first. Another thing that can encourage talk, this isn't just about, you know, you, the person initiating the conversation, but sometimes it's about feeling included enough to be able to get into that conversation. And I heard about the Pac-Man rule. It was created by Eric Schol, Schol I'm butchering the young man's name. I have it spelled out though on this here slide. And what it is essentially is that you, when you're in a group of people talking, Make your group a little bit more inclusive by opening it up, kind of Pac-Man style, so that another person can come up and join the group. And when that person comes and fills the gap, you all you know, pause for a second, say, hey, my name is, and we're talking about, so that they feel included in the conversation and can pick up on the conversation. And then also kind of you know, make room for another person to join you. This is what the Pac-Man rule looks like. So as you see, there's, this is a closed group. It's not inclusive. A shy person isn't going to walk up and intervene like that. But when you have this opening, now it's a more welcoming environment. They can come right in and fill in the gap and start talking. And then you move, shift a little bit, and let somebody else come up. It's a great way to meet people. This is um, Eric that I was talking about that invented the Pac-Man rule animated by Dylan, which was beautifully animated, no sound, fantastic. 
and this is where the video and the actual Pac-Man rule lives. So you can find this on the slides when I leave them with you um, via a link. It's a great tool, and it's especially helpful for introverts and people on the spectrum as far as not wanting to uh, interject themselves into other people's conversations. It just makes it so much more welcoming. Back to the rules, <laughs> or the guides, as you say, the tips. Small talk leads to more talk. You don't have to go into your conversations knowing exactly what it is that you're going to talk about. Sometimes it is literally as simple as saying, hi, my name is, I work at this place. You can ask the person, hey, so are you a developer? And I guarantee you, nine times out of 10, they're either going to say yes or they're going to say no. And then they're going to explain to you what they love either about being a dev or what they you know, love about not being a dev. But it leads to more conversation. Or you can ask them, you know, hey, did you see Harry Potter? Have you, you know, are you part of the wizarding world? What house are you in? Just random, you know, icebreakers. What do you like to do? Why are you here at this conference? What brought you out? So keep it small and it'll start to just grow organically. And then as the conversation um, continues on, exchange information with people. That's how, you, that's how you get them into your network. So another part of this is that in a room full of those people, full of them, you need to be you. Your authenticity is what's going to get you um, endeared to people. Be your whole self, be your real self. Sometimes it's really hard for us to do because sometimes being, um, like I said, being a shy person, I didn't know how people were going to perceive me and how they would take me. And what has helped me to overcome that is just to be myself. Either they're going to love me or they're not. And that's quite all right. If they don't, if I'm not your cup of tea, that is completely okay. I do not mind. That is not going to dim my sunshine. I'll just go and be bright somewhere else. And that's who they're going to remember is your real self. They're not going to remember the representative that you put in front of them because the conversation wasn't authentic. Another part about initiating conversations with people is actually being present in the moment, being a genuine listener, not just listening for um, the surface stuff, but listen, if they told you that they have something in common with you or that they're from around here, like I remember that, um, I remember that I met someone and something that struck out to me about them was the fact that they were also a back-end C-sharp dev woman and I don't run into them often. And so I'm like, holy crap, we have so many things to talk about, let's talk, it's amazing. Or even people that I have met here, I remember that you're from Omaha, and I remember that you're from India, like actually from India. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> came all this way? And we've had great conversations. So being able to listen and actually make yourself listen to people tell you their answers, so that you can remember the conversations that you had with them. Make those connections. Consider how you can be of help to someone. Not necessarily how they can help you, but maybe you know something. Or when they tell you that they're working on this great app and they're getting stuck with the difference between, I don't know, syntax and Python and syntax and C sharp, you, you know a trick and you can help them with that. Or say for instance, somebody wants to start launching like their lawn care business and then someone else you know is selling lawn care equipment. Hey, let me help you out here. I know a guy that can help. Or maybe you can help yourself. Maybe it's something that you specifically can do. So say for instance, if you know that someone has a young child that it might be interested, that's what happens with me. I find out that people have children that are interested in coding or, or the parent is interested in getting the kid into coding. And I'm like, oh, yes. I got you. I've got two programs. I was like, is your child male or female? Female? Okay, I'm going to send you this way first. And then, regardless, I'm going to send you to Coder Dojo KC because this is where we are growing this problem solving and this analytical thinking with using code, bending code to your will to accomplish tasks. I'm putting that out there. I'm promoting KC Wit at the same time, and I'm helping them get connected to community programs. So consider how you can help. 
I told you earlier, one-sided relationships don't last long. Don't always be out for, hmm, what can they do for me? What can they do for me? Trade contact info. This is an important part of networking. If you don't trade info, you can't help anybody and you can't be helped by anyone because you can't get in touch. Follow them on Twitter if they've offered to be on Twitter with you. Connect with them on LinkedIn. This definitely helped me when I was getting, when I was going through my boot camp. Um, we had a career panel two months before we graduated. And I met the CTO of Veriship and the chief architect of Veriship. Something about them just stuck out to me and I'm gonna tell you a funny story. So as they were talking, um, I was picking up how laid back they were and I, they told me that they didn't do whiteboard interviews and I'm like, heck yeah, that's where I wanna go interview. When we did the breakout sessions, one of the first things that I asked the CTO was, um, I wasn't even looking for a job really because I was still in school and you know, I, I didn't think I knew enough. But I asked him, how did he get into his first tech role? And he told me that he was an actuary. Me being the nerdy person that I am, I knew that that was life and I knew that was insurance. And so of course I said, oh, that's sexy. And he laughed. He laughed and he was like, yeah, well, I speak math. Well, he said, I like math. I have a degree in math. I was like, oh, I speak math fluently. And then as I thought about it, I was like, so you'd be interested possibly in somebody that went through this boot camp that may also have a degree in physics. And he said, why actually, yes, I would be. We have several physics people on our team. And he offered me his card and said, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm not saying I did it that same night, but I was connected with him by the time the weekend was over on LinkedIn. And I had approached him on LinkedIn saying, hey, it was great talking to you. This is what stood out about our conversation to me. And um, I'd love to keep in contact. And his response was that he loved that I was willing to ask questions and be myself. And he wanted me to submit my resume because they had an opening for an entry level dev that had come up. And I was like, well, holy crap, let me go and check out this job description. And so I sent it to him. And I sent him my resume. Next thing I know, I had my phone interview. I'm still in class, mind you, having my phone interview. And then I had my in-person interview the day before we graduated. And then two weeks later, I had a job offer. I started working. I finished graduating my boot camp December 2017. And I started working January 8th of 2018, and I love it. I have not looked back, I've taken it and ran with it. It was amazing. But had I not met this person at my career panel and been willing to go out and talk to them and make this person a social media connection, make them uh, kind of like a second, third-ish type connection, I wouldn't have been able to leverage that. So it was that he had this particular interaction with me that was giving me that extra boost. You want that. You want that when you're going to go apply for new positions and new opportunities. So trade the contact info so that you can get in touch with people. The last, I think most important part of this is to follow up and follow through. If you were talking to someone, say for instance, the lawn care guy that was starting his own lawn care business and you said, hey, yeah, I know this guy that's selling stuff. Let me, get, you know, let me connect you all. If you promised an email, you promised a follow-up of some sort, do that. Send that to that person. They're going to remember that about you. And then when they can help you, they're going to remember that you helped them. It's just that simple. It's hard, though, because I also struggle with follow-up and follow-through <laughs> still. I have to tell myself, make myself do it. So after I leave here, when I have collected all of my lovely business cards, if I haven't connected with you on LinkedIn already, then I will be reaching out over the weekend to finish connecting. So let's get to what we've covered. We've done the what, the why, the who, the how. This is, I guess, kind of the more important one, right? When and where, when and where, when and where. Everywhere, all the time, everywhere. Everywhere except funerals and bathrooms because no one wants that, no one wants that. But seriously though, when opportunities arise, you need to be prepared to take them. 
Be prepared to take those opportunities. Those opportunities can happen anywhere at any point in time. There's so many good places to network. You can network at conferences, like how we're doing here. I've met several people here. Thank you very much. Connections, I'll be reaching out. Meetups. So there's several meetups in this city or in your city that you should be able to find people to go and meet up with that are like-minded. It doesn't even have to be a tech meetup. You can go and meet up and do something that is your hobby. Say you want to go learn French. Maybe you go to the Say It in French meetup and find people that are like-minded. You never know who you're going to meet at these places. Shindigs. Shindigs are an awesome place to network. You're having a party, libations are flowing. It's fantastic, fun times. You can be yourself. Airports. Sometimes, now if somebody has on their headphones, they probably don't want to be bothered. You got to take that social cue and not bother them with their headphones on. But otherwise, if you're just sitting next to someone who's do, also doing nothing, strike up a conversation. I met this lovely woman from the south of France, and we just had a great time talking because she was in the United States about to go to like the Bahamas and had been laid over forever. But she was so lovely. So lovely that I stayed in contact with her. We're now Facebook friends, and whenever I make it to Versailles, I'm going to go and hit her up. You can also talk to people in elevators. These are the people that you see all the time anyway. If you're walking from the parking lot, and you're, you know that you both come in at seven every day, why not say hi? Just strike up something. It starts off, you know, hi. Next week, maybe you're talking about this crazy weather in Kansas City. Maybe the next week, something interesting that has popped up. Coffee shops, Chipotle. There's an asterisk by Chipotle because Chipotle is signifying places with long lines. <laughs> places with long lines. I could also say this about uh, Joe's Kansas City on a busy day. Strike a conversation with these people. Y'all are all, you have something in common. You're hungry and you're waiting, for, waiting to get in to order food. You can network at work. What do your coworkers do outside of work? Do you, I mean, if you care to know, Find out what they do. I know a guy who I worked with who had a junk lugging business. And I still have his card because my plan is to get him to lug some junk from my parents' house because they're just not the same nimble creatures they once were. And the, you know, the furniture's heavy. But he'll come and pick it up with his business. You can network on LinkedIn. You don't have to know the people per se that you're connected to on LinkedIn, but you kind of want to know how they found you or how you found this person. And if they don't want to connect, you can still follow them without actually connecting with them. Engage on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, engage on Twitter. I feel like as tech people, we should be on Twitter because the Twitter tech community is so robust. There's something for everyone out there, all different kinds of resources. Facebook. Eh, my Facebook is for friends and family that I know, but hey, I can put out, when I'm running a special on a website, I can put it out there. And Instagram. These are great places to network. So, my friend, DJ Khaled, major keys, communication, connection, follow through. These are the main things that you need to be able to incorporate, whether it's just, like I said, starting off with saying, hi, my name is, hey, I would love to continue this conversation later. Is it okay if I connect with you on LinkedIn? Actually submit the connection, the, the connection request on LinkedIn. Do those things. That's how you'll grow your, that's how you will grow it. And more than network, what we're trying to do is build a connect work. A what was that level of connection? Let's do that. I think that you all got this. I've given you great notes, right? Great tips. You can take these, pass them on, run with them, check back on them. I believe in you. We can do this. My slides are available at www.riadixon.com slash connectwork. And if you have any questions or if there's anything that, I, that you feel that I left out that I should add, these are ever-evolving slides and I will add it to the slides. I promise. You can just keep checking back as a reference. Are there any questions thus far? Yes, no, maybe. So I'm I'm not an introvert, so I can talk to anybody, it's no big deal. But mm -hmm. you said you sometimes would uh, hang out on the wall, yeah. check out the wall. So how did you break through, um, like for me, I don't even know how to not do that. So, <laughs> so, how, so how, did, how, did, how did you overcome that to where, like what was your big driver? 
So the question is, what helped me to be able to break out of my shyness from sticking to walls in dark places and drink tables? And the answer to that is, one, I did, I set those goals to meet people, um, to just get, to try to force myself to meet somebody. And I found that the more that I did that, the more that I started off with hi, my name is, instead of waiting for someone to come up and find me, then the easier it got for me. Like the more that you put yourself out there, it's hard at first, but it gets so much easier because you're like, okay, I at least know I've got these three lines down. And if I can just ask them, what do they do? They will do all the talking. They will do all of the talking. So that, that's one thing that helped. The other thing that helped, I guess, would be my husband and his family. They are like, um, I love them. But they will not let you sit down and be by yourself. So they will come and like poke you with sticks. Because they're like, are you alive over there? Are you, what are you doing? Why are you sitting over here by yourself? And so I just started having to, I was kind of forced to come out of that shell with the family. But as far as going to events, yeah, it was just setting a goal for myself, trying to hit the goal because I'm a very goal-oriented, checklist-oriented type person. And I say, okay, I've met a person. I've got a car. Great. Okay, I've met another person. I've got another card. Great. One thing that I found that I didn't do sometimes was I didn't always follow up in time. Can, if you fail to follow up in time, then not only have you kind of forgotten what you talked about, but the person that offered you the card, they've forgotten too. They don't remember where they met you. They don't remember what you all were talking about. Try to keep it fresh in their mind so they're more willing to accept your connection request. Um, once you, once you submit it. And another little tip that I've started to do is when I've met someone, I jot down quickly where I met them at. So on people's business cards that I've received, I've jotted down flyover camp, and I jotted down a quick reminder about what did we talk about so that I can remember to put names and faces with, with people. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's the guy from Omaha. Okay, I got it. Because I'm, I'm, ho I'm horrible with names. <laughs> I'm really horrible with names. I try to be better. Yes. Um, I, I am an introvert. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not shy. I don't have a problem with talking to people, but sometimes I have trouble figuring out that I, you know, that I want to do it, getting, getting up the motivation to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And what I found is easier is to look for somebody else who's a wallflower, somebody, find somebody else who's not talking to anybody, and go talk to them because it's easier than trying to break into a conversation that's already in progress. So I look for somebody else who's, who's not talking to anyone and you know, not on their phone or listening to earbuds or something. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great tip. Finding another wallflower, another person who is kind of just floating around the outside, that is an awesome way to initiate conversation with someone. You, all, you two already have something in common. You are both not talking to anyone else right now. Let's talk to each other. Let's strike up conversation. Maybe we'll walk over to the drink table together. And it's a great way to meet more people. Great way to meet more people. And then, you know, you can pick up other stragglers on your way, right? Any other questions or comments? Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming to my talk. I really appreciate it. My name is Rhea Dixon, again, at The Fake Riri. The Fake Riri on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. If you could please just let me know that it was flyover camp. If we don't actually change cars, just let me know it was flyover camp. I will be happy to talk to you after this is over. Thank you.